All right, welcome. In this video, I want to show a little bit how I've organized Mario's animations so that based on the different states, whether he's jumping, facing left, right, big, small, etc., how I've organized his animations inside the Mario entity so that it's easy to decide which animation to play, which frame to play, uh, and then therefore animate Mario as we would want him to be. So to set up Mario's animations, I'm actually going to store all of that Mario's animations in a list, but not just one list, it's actually going to be a list of list of lists. It's going to be a, a three-dimensional array or three-dimensional list um, where I'm going to index into that list based off of Mario's different states. Now, before you decide to plan your own character's um, animation organization, you're going to need to decide what are the various states that your main character can be in? And so I've had to go through that for uh, Mario and the original uh, Super Mario Brothers. And I've decided to use a couple different state variables to keep track of the state. Now I'm using integer state variables, which is a little bit old school, especially in JavaScript. We can actually use strings here. Uh, so I might not need this, you know, zero equals little, one equals big, and so on. I could just use the string little, big, super, etc. I personally find that to be still just a little bit, uh, just as much tricky because I need to remember what string did I use. Did I call it small or little or something like that? I still need to have a little table somewhere telling me what those special words are that I'm using. Um, and so I've just used my old school way of defaulting to some, some integers to do this. So the first thing that you can see in terms of a state variable for Mario I have is the size. And we just saw Mario sort of grow from being little Mario to being big. And then Mario also has firepower, which I'm calling super. Um, and you'll see these other states, little invincible, so that's the star power. I actually haven't implemented those yet. So uh, everything after this point, I'm sort of uh, wishful thinking that's how I'm going to implement it. When I implement them, I might refactor and change this a little bit more. Uh, also, Mario could be facing in one of two directions. And so the, Im the important thing to note here is that these states can, are independent from the size, meaning I can be little, big, super, or, or sorry, and be facing right or left. So while I'm little, I could be facing right and left. So I can be little and right, little and left. And then likewise, I've added one extra state here as well that I'm just calling state, which is, well, what is Mario doing? I might call this action instead. So he could be idle, he could be walking, running, skidding, or jumping and falling, which are the same thing in, in the Mario environment. So I've got them as uh, state four. So we can sort of see the fifth state there, is ducking. Well, I actually haven't implemented ducking into the gameplay yet, although I do have the animations created. Um, so again, like the invincibility or the star power above, this is a little bit of wishful thinking going forward. The other thing I should mention at this point is I have refactored um, my the way I've handled my animations at least twice up till this point. As I add more in, I recognize, hey, it's going to be easier if I start bundling these together. Uh, my initial set of animations, I had a different one. I had a walk animation, an idle animation, and so on. And now I'm just bundling them all into one, uh, like I mentioned, um, three-dimensional list of animations. I've actually just bundled that off in its own helper function, as you can see here. And so I've got that down below here. Usually I have it, you know, closed off here um, because it's a lot of extra code that I don't usually want to look at after I'm done writing it. But I do want to share a little bit about how this works. Now, first of all, I've got my, my list of animations set up. It's a three-dimensional list and I've just got a little comments here to sort of remind myself that there are going to be six states that's including that's the uh, idle walking running jumping ducking and skidding there are the three sizes I haven't implemented the uh, star power yet so I've got a little comment here to remind myself that when I do implement star power I might need to again refactor this change it do something to it and then I have the two directions just facing left and facing right and so as a result, when I want to select an animation, maybe we can look down here at 000 uh, animation. The first index here is going to be the, the state. So zero means idle. The next one is going to, it looks like, be the size. So zero means small or little. And then the last one here is going to be which direction we're facing. And zero meant right. And one means left. And so I've got a few comments here just to remind myself as I was setting this up how I was going to do this. But now what I've actually done is 
I've used the animator as we've looked at in a previous video and I've gone and I've looked at my sprite sheet and I've gone and checked okay for the first idle animation facing right it was in you know uh, position 016 sorry that's wrong it was in position 210 0 and it was a 16 by 16 uh, image or frame that's because the small Mario as we saw is, is only 16 by 16 whereas the large Mario is two blocks tall so uh, is 32 in its Y dimension and again selecting the large Mario I have a different location on the sprite sheet now one thing I will point out for the idle animation is that there is only one frame and many of Mario's animations are only one frame so why did I include them as an animation why didn't I just draw the frame without using this sort of animator wrapper class that has a lot of code in it that maybe does a lot of ex extraneous operations when really we only just want to print one uh, frame. Now the reason why I've done this is because I want all the animations in Mario to be the same. Whether they're one frame or multiple frames, I want to treat them as an animation. So foreshadowing, I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom because at the end when I want to animate Mario, when I want to call Mario, I only want to make one method call and I want to call an animations draw frame. So as a result, I've decided that a lot of Mario's animations that are only one frame long, they're not really animations at all, I've decided to treat them as animations. So I've got them as one frame long. That means these next, well, next couple um, uh, parameters don't mean anything. We could set anything to them. The next one was the frame duration. Well, if there's only one frame, it doesn't matter how long you're going to leave it on there because the next frame is the same frame again. Um, padding between frames. There's only one frame. It doesn't matter. So I could have set these both to some other value. I think the reason they are these values is I cut and pasted them from some other entry I had before where I did want the timing to be about one third a second and I had a frame padding of 14 which is true for a lot of my animations in Mario. So I cut and paste that. The next one was should we run the animation in reverse? That doesn't matter if you only have one at one frame. And then the last one does matter which is the loop condition and for any animation that only has one frame you you want it to loop because you want it to go back to that frame after whatever arbitrary time frame you've put on here is completed so after this one third of a second it loops back and it goes back to frame one so I haven't done anything too special here other than I sort of reuse the animator class to work for a animation of, of one frame and it and you know I tested it out and indeed it does work for us so this is my idle animation setting up and you can see the only difference between these is again I've gone and I've looked on my sprite sheet to find the different locations for each of those one frames the the small big and super uh, firepower facing right and small big and firepower facing left okay the next animations I've got set up here are the walk animations and I think these are the ones we looked a little bit closer at uh, last time which were three frames long. And I've actually fine-tuned them a little bit. I think when we were setting them up before, I set the time that they appeared on the screen to be much slower uh, each frame. And that allows you to debug a little bit and make sure all the frames are being shown, make sure it's not going backwards. If it's what well, that's what we noticed last time, that maybe some of these were going backwards when we didn't want them to be. And then when you're done, uh, I speed it up. Now, I, I tried as much as possible to make everything in this uh, Mario clone to be exactly the same as the original. However, some of the data I couldn't find or it's buried in some assembly code that I don't really want to dig through. Uh, and so I've actually just guessed this and I guessed it by looking and deciding, hey, um, about one tenth of a second is how long each frame looks like a normal walk for Mario. Now the next thing you'll notice is the run animation. This is one of the clever things that the original Mario did to save memory is the run animation and the walk animation are exactly the same. It's just sped up. So all you can see here is that I've just doubled the speed or double the rate that the running animation goes. So again, when Mario moves from walking to running, um, I just speed up the walking animation to make it look that way. Other, everything else is exactly the same. And you can see I've sort of painstakingly, as I mentioned, gone through for each one of these animations and found the exact pixel locations they appear in my sprite sheet and then 
entered it here. Now, luckily again, for most of Mario's animations, we're stuck with this 16 by 16 or 16 by 32 size. That's very convenient. When your frames are already a fixed size, it means you don't have to go and, and nitpick those numbers as well. Now, if you're using a sprite sheet for sort of a more advanced game, um, where there isn't going to be this fixed frame size, I'm thinking here of maybe like a, a fighting game where you're going to have maybe multiple animations for just the same uh, single character um, and maybe multiple um, bounding boxes as well. We haven't talked about collision yet, but in those cases, those animations are much more complex and you might have to even update your animator class from mine to be more sophisticated than mine. In which case, there is some time consuming uh, uh, going into setting up these animations. So make sure you set yourself a little bit of time to do that. But once you've done it, you, you pretty much ignore these. These are magic numbers, but I, I don't set them up with constants or variables because I use them exactly once and then they disappear. I don't need to think about them again. Um, and so as you can see here, I've just gone ahead and done this for all my animations. The run animation, then the slide anim animation is back to being a, an animation of one frame. Uh, same with the jump animation, happens to only be one frame for the original Mario. I imagine maybe some of the later Marios where Mario has a cape on or, or maybe a tail or something like that, um, the jump animation goes from being one frame to actually having an animation now where the cape sort of flows in the, in the air or something like that. But again, for the very original Mario, these are all one frame animations. But as I mentioned, I've set them all up as animations. Now, the only animation I set up that's different is called is the dead animation and if you remember in the super original super mario brothers the dead animation is just a small version of mario flying up into the air and then falling off the screen the bottom of the screen and um, because that's a special animation that uh, isn't in the normal game gameplay and because it isn't sensitive to um, whether you're your small larger firepower or whether you're facing left or right it's actually facing forward um, i made it its own special animation and you might need to do this for some of your animations too especially things like the death animation um, sometimes maybe the idle animation would be this way as well uh, because they're sort of special uh, but i've chosen to do this and that's added one level of complexity now you'll notice here i've closed off my extra functions here that i, I haven't really talked about yet i haven't said how we change the state how do we detect that mario is small or big or facing left or right or moving running jumping etc that's all going to be handled inside this update function okay inside the update function um, we're going to detect to see if the user is controlling Mario and therefore what state Mario might be in. Um, and that's, that's uh, information for a later video when I start talking about controls coming up soon. Okay, But for now, I just wanted to show you how I've organized Mario's animations into Mario's entity. And that makes it very easy now. Um, the whole intention here is, well, if Mario's dead, I do the dead animation. All right. Otherwise... Um, I just call call this function once, but using the state variables that I defined above. So now that I've, I've sort of delicately set up my animations to be this three-dimensional array, I merely need to index into the array by the current state, the current size, and the direction I'm facing, and then that will that will fetch out an animation for me and then i just call draw frame on that animation whatever that animation is remember some of them might be single frame animators some of them might be multiple frame animators it doesn't matter at this point i don't need to know i just call draw frame and this is following a design pattern that is intended with this entity design that we have with the update and the draw which is that we're trying to minimize within the draw function any logic that is related to uh, checking or changing the state of the entity itself, that should be all contained inside the update method. The update method will maybe check to see if the user is pressing uh, some keys down, and if so, maybe make state changes to, to the entity, or maybe um, in the update we're checking for some collisions even. Maybe I've run into a fireball and now I'm dead, things like this. This might change my, uh, my state. All of those changes are supposed to occur in the update. And the only thing that the draw is supposed to think about is drawing. So what should I draw? So it might check your state like this, 
are we dead? Or it might index based on your state like this, meaning the state is important, it factors into deciding what we draw, but all we should be doing inside the draw function is drawing. Okay, maybe branching based off the state, but drawing. The only thing I've also got in this, this draw is a little bit of de debug code, which I've added, and I'll probably talk more about that when we get to bounding boxes. This will draw a little box around the entity to show where its boundary is for the purposes of, of calculating your collisions. Uh, but we're not worried about that just you know so i've left those turned off and we have our debug flag turned off in any case so this video was just intended to show how we've organized the animations inside a complex entity like like your main character like mario that will have a, a good number of animations attached to it some of your other entities might also be this complex in which case you can use this same style to organize your animations inside your entities so thanks a lot and we'll see you in the next video.